AFLW, who watches it? Me. The more they play, the better it gets. The AFLW show. This AFLW show will be better than any other AFLW show there is. We will talk the truth. We will give all the reviews and previews of the rounds just gone and upcoming. We will talk about any topical conversations on this show. It's a show for the people. This is the AFLW show and it starts right now. Yes, no. Wow, hello everyone and welcome to the AFLW show. I'm your host Cooper, the sole admin of AFL information, trade rooms and results. And what a weekend of AFLW footy it was. Some interesting results yet again, some comebacks, some chokes. It was a great round. And um, yeah, I just want to show you a clip that I filmed at the end of my Essendon Fremantle AFLW match day vlog. Please check it out if you haven't already. This was the ending to the Bombers having a good 20-point win in the end over the Dockers in that game. Could have gone either way. Here is the end of it, and then we'll get right into the proceedings. Here it is. Cody to me out, probably. What's that? What's that? Yep, good. Break up the stupid coach. Points. Stop <laughs> There we go. Bombers win by 20 points. And the Saints are winning too. Up the Saints as well. I think we would have choked a 20 point lead. The Saints win as well. How's this? Let's go. Let's go, all right. The Saints. You guessed it. The Saints won against the Pies. The Pies choked a 20 point lead. The Pies were up as much as 26 points late in the third quarter. How good. Up the Saners. Disappointing I wasn't there now. I was at the, I want to clarify yet again, I was at the Essendon Fremantle game for business reasons. So unfortunately, I was unable to attend the St Kilda game, but it's okay. I was watching it and tracking it through my phone, the Saints game, throughout the game. They played at the same time as the Essendon Freo game. Yeah, great win for the Saints and the Bombers Freo. That game could have gone either way, but we'll get to that in the review. But up the Saners, Petruchios, Zenos, Guttridge, McDonald, Lambert, fantastic. We'll get to that game shortly. Up and about with that result, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, but please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the bell for all notifications. We'll have at least 20 likes on this video. If you know any AFLW players that you would love to see on the show or for me to interview or do a golfing challenge with, etc., please message me on Instagram, AFL Info Live, and we'll try and sort something out. I greatly appreciate it. Or if you're watching this and you would like to be part of the show as a co-host in some capacity, please message me on Instagram, AFL Info Live, or Facebook, AFL Information, Trade Rumors and Results. We're approaching 55,000 followers on there, which is awesome. So on the show today, we've got the world-famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang, as always. Going to go through my team of the week, my Scoops AFLW medal, my AFLW fantasy score. I thought I did okay. I didn't think I did amazing, but then when I look at it, I actually did all right. Review the rounds, just gone and upcoming. And any other chatter we will talk about. So before I start off, I want to aim for 20 likes this video. So please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button. Once we hit 3K subs, we'll be doing some prize giveaways. Um, if you haven't checked out some of my recent interviews, this is referring to AFW players. So with Lauren Pierce, the Melbourne AFW Premiership Ruck, um, I interviewed her last Tuesday live at Gosh's Paddock. So go check that out. It's on the channel if you haven't already. Uh, I've had interviews recently with Caitlin Miller from the Giants. Um, Neve Kelly from the Crows, Jessica Wooshner from the Bombers. There's a lot of interviews on there, so go and check it out. And Talia Fellows from the Hawks did the Gold King Challenge with, with her friend Casey Demon, VFLW representative Kate Conroy, Katie Conroy. So go check that out also if you haven't already. A lot of AFLW, VFLW player interviews, Gold King Challenges on the channel throughout the last few months. So go and check them out if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it. And potentially some more guests lined up. And if you haven't checked up, on the Essendon Freo match day vlog, please check out 16 minutes worth of your time. So we'd greatly appreciate it. All right. It is time 
for the segment where it is going to be world famous. It's just not me saying is a catchphrase. It's a fact. Look at the analytics, and I know. It is time for the world famous segment. Soups goes bang. Wow. I mean, I do it on the AFL podcast, I think, and, and there's a valid reason as to why. But what I will say is the umpiring standard in the AFL is bad. And to no surprise, it trends down to the AFLW as well. Like, how many times a game's going to be ruined by decisions? Like, there's some basic mistakes. There's no particular example that I'm giving this round. It's just a consistency of bad calls. We accept there might be an odd bad call here and there, but it's not just one or two a game. It's more than that, and it's just completely frustrating, and we would love for it to be better. Just playing short, sharp, short and sharp. Lift your game, umpires. Come on. Now, there was actually um, something at the Essen Freire game I wanted to address. If I can get the photo up, otherwise I'll just have to mention it. But um, there was a there was a 50-50 call that where Freeman or defender um, touched the ball and it wasn't given a touch behind, which I found very, very interesting. I'm going to try and get the photo of it up. Um, it w- I thought it was very, very unlucky. Here it is. I think that's the right one. Let's see if it'll go up on the screen. No, it won't. Okay. That's annoying. Um, but regardless, it was, you know, it was a decision that raised a few eyebrows. I think it was Madeline Scanlon for the Dockers or Emma Rowe Driscoll, I can't remember which one it was, um, touched the ball on the line and they paid it a goal. I mean, all we like is just some consistency with decisions and be paid when they're there, you know. But it's just really frustrating when it doesn't go their way. I, it's on my vlog, so if you haven't seen it, please go check it out. You'll know what I'm talking about when you watch the footage live. And you just pause it, and you'll see the ball was touched. It was in the second quarter, I believe it was. So go and check that out. I um, would greatly appreciate it. All right. Now it's time to go through. Let's go through my AFL W team of the week. <clears throat> From the back line, the pockets, Belinda Smith and Mira Gervin. Full back, Claudia Gunjaka. Half back line, the flankers, Mia Bush and Emma O'Driscoll. Centre half back, Janelle Kuth Burtson. Wingman, Amy McDonald and Grace Egan. Centerman, Jasmine Garner. Half forward line, the flankers, Eden Zanka and Chloe Shear. Centre half forward, Kate Hoare. Forward pockets, Elise jo- Jones and Gemma Houghton. Full forward, Bonnie, too good. Ruckman, Ali Morfitt, Rovers, Ebony Marinoff and Elise Parker. Interchange, Zali Goldsworthy, Georgia Patrikios. Nina Morrison, Ash Riddell, and the sub, Monique Conti. The Bernsteins, Keely Shera, Ali Anderson, and Tilly Lucas Rod. So let's get let's get the banner up of those names. Make sure I put up the right one and not the vote one just yet. All right, so there we go. So there is my team of the week. I'll go to the reasons through some of them. Um, Emma O'Driscoll had around 20 disposals, but it, it wasn't really that. It was the fact of lot, nine one percenters and uh, intercept possessions. She just deserved spot for a team that was in the game. They had a bad patch in the later half of the game. I thought she still stood up and did pretty well. Um, yeah, so she did um, pretty good. Jasmine Garner, she just gets over 30 disposals every week as a Midfield, she's just awesome. Kicked a goal as well. It was a lock. Grace Egan for the Tigers. I thought she did really well in a close win that they had over Carlton. Um, she deserved a spot in the team. Eden Zanka kicked three and 14 touches. Kate Hall for the Demons kicked two and 17 disposals. Chloe Shear kicked four. Elise Jones kicked four. 
22, good kick, two goals, two, 22 disposal. She was terrific for the Bombers. Houghton, the three, 18. Ali was a clear standout ruckman for me for the round. Over 20 disposals, around 20 disposals, so she did pretty good. Ebony Marinoff had 42 possessions off the record, um, which is 42 disposals held held by Ash Riddell, who is also in this team after 30 disposals again, like Ghana, had a really good game for the North Melbourne Footy Club. Georgia Patrikios may not have had the biggest amount of numbers, but had about 18 disposals. It was terrific for the Saints in their comeback. She was St Kilda's best player in the comeback. Zali Goldsworthy for the Giants. They, she may only have had, again, like Patrikios, 18 disposals. She had like 10 tackles. She was really important. I was watching that game, and I seen... You know, when the side, you know, it, it might sound stupid, but they were actually close and for the first three quarters. Um, and Zali Goldsworthy was a key reason as to why they were close. The margin three at a time may have been about five goals, but it felt much closer than that. If you watched the game, you would know. And the last quarter was what was bad for the Giants. Um, and, yeah, so Ali Anderson from the Lions, Silly Lucas Rod from Hawthorne and Keely Chara for the Blues were the ones that just... Missed out. So comment down below your thoughts on my AFRW team of the week. Let's go review round four. Um, and it was an interesting round of AFRWs I said earlier. Um, I'll go through some of the or all the results right now. In fact, we had the Hawks 11 defeated by the Demons 70. 59 point victory of the Demons. Well, I've been saying it for a while. Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane and North Melbourne are the top four clear standouts in the competition sh- this year. Fifth is probably nowhere near as good as them. So, Melbourne, terrific. Zanka, Hoare, Purcell, uh, Lauren Pierce, they were all very good. Tyler Hanks was terrific for the Demons. And unfortunate for the for the um, Hawks that Mackenzie Early went off with concussions. Concussion. So hopefully she's all good and will be available the week after this week. Um, now let's go to the next game, which is GWS and Adelaide. The second highest score of a team of all time, Adelaide 106, Giants 37. 69-point victory to the Crows, but it certainly did not feel like that. Um, at least with the first three quarters, the Crows just picked like six goals to nil in the last quarter to make the margin look a lot worse than it was. But Marinoff with 40, at least Parker with 31, Zali Goldsworth with 18 and 10 tackles, as I mentioned earlier in the goal. It was really good. Caitlin Miller, who I interviewed last week, kicked a goal on return for the Giants. Good to see. Um, for the Crows, Marinoff, Neve Kelly was good, who I also interviewed did really good. Marinoff, Hatchard, the usual suspects. Caitlin Gould was all right for the Crows as well. Had some really good contributors. Next game is Carlton and Richmond. Carlton 40, defeated by Richmond 47, Richmond by seven points. Well, Carlton in front for most of this game, and then they blew it late. Um, Carlton would be very disappointed with how they performed in the end. Jesse Good in the ruck was good, <laughs> if you pardon the pun. Um, Grace Egan, Monique Conti were some of the better players for Richmond. Port Adelaide and Geelong. Port Adelaide 42, defeated by Geelong, 70, 28 points. Um, Gemma Houghton was good for the power. There wasn't many other major contributors for the power. Geelong, Shear kicked four. Nina Morrison at over 30. Uh, Claudia Gunchaka did well in defence um, for the Geelong Club, footy club. But they were always in control. Yes, Durs, yes Dursman, the brother of Zave and Zane. Uh, sorry, the sister of brother Zane and Zave and Willem. Um, she wasn't in the team. She wasn't in the emergency. So I don't know how she got in the team. I wonder if there's some sort of fine that works out. I don't know how she was in the lineup when she wasn't in the team or an emergency. Nonetheless, she was in in the end and did pretty well for her second game for the season. Um, yeah, they, quite late, they weren't that good. Let's be real. They weren't that good. Uh, Geelong were pretty much in cruise control for the whole game. The next thing I want to go through on Sunday games was Sydney and West Coast. Sydney 34, West Coast 21. Not the best at game. Two bottom-ranked sides. Chloe Malloy and Ali Morfitt would sit two of Sydney's better players with Laura Gardner and Sophia Hurley. Uh, North Melbourne and Brisbane, North 33, defeated by Brisbane 35, two points. Brisbane kicked a late goal and a couple of behinds the last three to four minutes of the game. North would be spewing 
and kicking themselves because they were up for the entire game in the last couple of minutes of the game. So they really frustrated. But it was led by Riddell and Garner in the midfield who were terrific. Me, King did all right for North as well. But Ali Anderson, Nate, Natalie Greider were good for the Brisbane Lions as well. Oh, that's the – I just realised. That was who I was meant to have in the team. Whoops. Oh, I made a boo-boo. Oh, whoops. Okay, and that team of the week, I'm going to add Natalie Greider in replace of Janelle Kuth Burtson. I don't know how I butcher that one, but that's the change I've made already. When I make the post, I'll edit, edit that. <laughs> boy, oh boy, where are we? Um, yeah, she was Natalie Greider was really good for the Brisbane Lions as well. Uh, Essendon and Frio, Essendon 50, defeated Frio 30, Essendon by 20 points. Obviously, as I was there, go check that vlog if you haven't already. I thought Frio started well, and then Essendon came back, and the game was close throughout the game. And then late in the third, Essendon seemed to pinpoint a few goals. Bonnie too good, Georgia Nansquan, a um, couple of other girls as well got some goals. Just to put that bar far. And then Freeman weren't really in it in the last quarter, or at the end of the quarter they weren't. Um, Emma O'Driscoll was Frio's best player. Kira Bowers went off injured, so she may be out this week. So we have to wait and see. Will that affect my AFLW fantasy team? You'll be checking out, check that out shortly. Um, but yeah, it was a disappointing loss in the end for Frio. They had their chances, and when it mattered, they didn't capitalize. And the Bombers' defense, led by, you know, Mia Bush and players like that, they did really well. And Bonnie Tugood was one of Essendon's better players. The Saints, 47, defeated the Pies, 35. Saints by 12 points. Now, at three quarter time, the Saints were down by 20 points. St Kilda kicked a late goal in the third. It was 26, essentially, for a couple of minutes to go in the third. I thought, nah, disappointing. We're going to be 0-4. Stuffed it last week against Port. Choked the 20-point lead. And I'm thinking, nah, that's it. Collingwood aren't great, but they're not bad. But, oh, it was great to see. I started seeing the stats. I'm looking at my phone going, okay, we've got a goal. Great, finally. Um getting the margin a bit closer. I didn't expect us to win. Then it was like, you know, I was checking every couple of minutes or so in the last quarter. I'm like, hang on a minute. We're just down by 14 points and now we're up by, now we're a goal behind. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, okay. And then I refreshed it within 20 seconds and we scored a goal. I said, what? what the hell is going on? Then more equal. And then bang, bang, two other quick goals within three, five minutes. And with three minutes to go, we're up by 12 points and we won. I'm like, this is great. I'm going to have to watch this replay back. Patrikios, Zenos, Gartridge, McDonald, Lambert, all terrific in that last quarter, and it was great to see. Benici and Sabrina Frederick were some of Collingwood's better players than Sarah Rowe, but Tani White, the ex-Saint for the Pies, kicked two. Some two nice goals, by the way. Um, but, yeah, the Saints did what Port did to them last week, and this is a big statement from the Saints. Great to see. Jesse Warlord did pretty good as well on the ruck who normally plays as a forward. She played a bit more ruck this week than normal, and I thought she was terrific as well. Great to see the Saints got the Bulldogs this week. Another chance to win here. If they win this, they could be two and three. Bit of a better position, so we'll have to wait and see. If they lose this, they're done. If they win this, it keeps a small chance still alive. So come on, Saints. Right, next game to go through is Gold Coast and the Bulldogs. Uh, it was Gold Coast by four points, but 48 to 44. But they really were in control for the entire game. They just had a late skip from the Bulldogs. But they're lucky they didn't cough up a 20-odd point lead as well. Lucy Single, Charlie Robot was some of the better plays for the uh, for the um, Suns. And Riley Wilcox was one of the better plays for the Bulldogs, as she did get the joint Rising Star nomination for the round, along with Steph Wales from the Bombers. So well done to both those girls. Riley Wilcox from the Bulldogs and Stephanie Wales from the Bombers. All right, it's now time to go through the Scoops AFLW medal reenacted like the great Gillen McLaughlin. <clears throat> Round four, Hawthorne v. Melbourne. Melbourne, Olivia Purcell, one vote. Melbourne, Kate Hoare, two votes. Melbourne, Eden Zanker, three votes. GWS v. Adelaide. Adelaide, Alois Jones, one vote. GWS, Elise Parker, two votes. Adelaide, Ebony Marinoff, three votes. Carlton v. Richmond. 
Richmond, Manique Conti, one vote. Carlton, Keely Scherer, two votes. Richmond, Grace Egan, three votes. Guadalupe v Geelong. Geelong, Chloe Shear, one vote. Gua uh, Geelong, Amy McDonald, two votes. Geelong, Nina Morrison, three votes. North Melbourne v Brisbane. Brisbane, Ali Anderson, one vote. North Melbourne, Ash Riddell, two votes. North Melbourne, Jasmine Garner, three votes. Sydney v West Coast. West Coast, Belinda Smith, one vote. Sydney, Laura Gardner, two votes. Sydney, Ali Morford, three votes. St Kilda v Collingwood. St Kilda, Olivia Vesely, one vote. St Kilda, Jamie Lambert, two votes. St Kilda, Georgia Patrikios, three votes. Essendon v Fremantle. Essendon, Stephanie Wales, one vote. Fremantle, Emma O'Driscoll, two votes. Essendon, Bonnie, too good, three votes. Gold Coast v Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs, Alice Edmonds, one vote. Gold Coast, Lucy Single, two votes. Gold Coast, Charlie Rowbottom, three votes. The leaderboard, are, or there's no leaderboard. I'm still keeping that secret. It's a secret. There's the votes. The top vote getters for the round, Eden Zanka, Ebony Marinoff, Grace Egan, Nina Morrison, Jasmine Garner, Ali Morfitt, Georgia Patrikios, Bonnie Too Good, and Charlie Rowbottom. Now, I'll potentially do only one more round of the Scoops A for W Metal votes on the show. Then I have a big extravaganza show after round 10 for the Scoops A for W Metal show, which will be debuting for its first ever installment. So I look forward to that. You don't even know the leaderboards, so I'm going to check it out. Who will be the inaugural Scoops A for W medal winner? There's plenty of names it could be, and the race is heating up. All right, now let's go through my FRW fantasy score. And I scored 13 12 for the round. Not too bad. And my ranking is 7,732. I mean, it's okay, I guess. Um, bit frustrating, but here we are. I have traded out Kira Bowers, who's under an injury clan. I was probably going to trade it anyway because she's dropping in price too. Traded out Kira Bowers for Jasmine Garner. I can't believe I didn't start with Jasmine Garner. I'm regretting that every week. Um, I've traded Nan Squan from the Bombers on the bench to downgraded Cody Jacks from the Bombers, who's thrown to the K. We scored a 40 on the weekend, which is okay, especially for the bench. I'm going to just make a little bit of money. Hopefully, Cody Jacks gets another game for the Bombers this week. She should. She did okay. Um, so, yeah, I've done that move. And the third one I'm thinking of is Brianna David from the Pies is 1.1 mil. To, or a cheap defender out. So I'm still contemplating who that will be. So for my team, um, it's just very interesting to see how we're going to go. My ch team changes every week, doing three trades every week, basically. I've currently done the two, but um, we'll have to wait and see. My current ruck is Matilda Schultz and Fleur Davies on the bench. So um it's gonna be interesting to see what I um what combination I um keep because it's like you don't really need a um high scoring ruck because there's not really many. So it's like why spend the money on someone that you probably don't even need? My forward line consists of, you know, Chloe Malloy, Christy Stratton, Holtz away from the Lions. It's um, it's very interesting, but I'm happy with how I'm going. Not as great as I was hoping, but still serviceable nonetheless. I wish the app, the app still doesn't work. You go on the AFL AFL Fantasy app, and the bottom says AFLW Classic. You'll click it, and it puts you to a web browser. Still, we're at round five now, coming up. Fix it. Should have been bringing that in, screws of bangers. So annoying, but yeah. Comment down below your AFLW fantasy score, any advice, any trades you're thinking of, um, any players you're wanting to bring in or take out. Comment down below and we'll get to that. Or message me on Instagram, AFL Info Live. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, congratulations to Riley Wilcox from the Bulldogs and Stephanie Wales from the Bombers for being the joint Rising Star nomination for round four. Let's now go preview round five. It starts Thursday night at GMHBA Stadium. It's Geelong hosting Melbourne, 6.15 Victorian time. I'm going to go for the Melbourne Footy Club. They're going to go almost undefeated. So Melbourne are in the clear top four standouts. So Melbourne will win there by 20 points. Uh, Friday, 1.05 p.m. at Icon Park. It's Richmond hosting Frio. I'm going to go Richmond by 10 points. Also at Icon Park, 4.05 p.m. Victorian time on Friday as well. Carlton hosting the Swans at Icon Park. I'll be tipping. Ooh, I'm going to go Carlton by 10 points. Friday night at Witten Noble, it's Bulldogs hosting my Saints, 7.15 p.m. Victorian time. I'm going to be tipping the Saints there by 15 points. Friday night also at 9.15 p.m. Victorian time in Perth at Mineral Resources Park is the Eagles hosting the Power. I'll be going the Power there by 20 points. Saturday grand final, AFL Grand Final Day at the Punt Road Oval. This originally was at the AIA, AIA Centre. It's now at Punt Road Oval at Richmond's Training Ground. Saturday at 11.05 a.m. is Collingwood hosting the Bombers. I'll be tipping the Bombers there. They're currently seventh of Bombers. They're going to stay in that eighth spot if a win on Saturday. And the Sunday games, first off at Arden Street Oval, it's North Melbourne hosting GWS at 1.05 p.m. Victorian time. I'll be tipping North Melbourne easily there by 40 points. And the Hawks and the Lions at Frankston, 3.05 p.m. Sunday, Victorian time. 3.05 Victorian time on Sunday, it's the Hawks and Lions, Frankston, as I said, the Lions will win by 40-plus points. And the final game of the round on Sunday, 5.05 p.m. Victorian time. It's Adelaide Crows hosting the Suns at Unley Oval in Adelaide. Ooh, I'll be tipping the Crows there by 15 points. My final thoughts are simply this. You want me on Cameo? Head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. You want to roast a friend? Wish someone a happy birthday. Anything at all, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe also if you haven't already. Share this video around. If you know anyone that would like to be part of the show in some capacity on, on the screen or behind the scenes, please message me on Facebook, AFL Information, Trade Rumors and Results, just under 55K followers, or on Instagram, AFL Info Live, um, around 3,300 subscribers or followers. So I greatly appreciate it. If you know any... AFLW players that you would love to see on this show or it's a Gold King Challenge or an interview, anything at all in that sub capacity, please message me on those platforms I just mentioned. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm going to contact a lot more guests. I'm going to try to get a lot more on. Thank you all. Enjoy the footy this week and go Saints.